the KMNN studios, this is the Kids Morning News Network. Good morning, it's April 19th, 2024, and I'm Alex in the KMNN studio in New York. Happy National Garlic Day, or should I say, Happy National Garlic Day. Goodness gracious. Yes, it is the day we celebrate the stinking rose. That's another name for garlic. Did you know the history of garlic can be traced back 5,000 years? It's believed to have first been harvested by people in Central Asia, somewhere between what is now Western China to Kazakhstan. People back then obviously knew a good thing when they saw it, or smelled it. Garlic quickly spread east through China, south into India, and west to Egypt, and eventually up into Europe. Garlic doesn't just taste great and smell, you know, smell pretty garlicky. It also has real health benefits. Namely, just makes you so happy to eat it. Or is that just me? Last month, we reported on the volcanoes erupting in Iceland. Today, on nearly the other side of the world, another eruption. This one is in Indonesia. Indonesia, like Iceland, is a very volcanically active country. The recent eruptions in Iceland involved cracks in the earth, but this volcano in Indonesia is the classic big, tall, mountain-shooting lava and fire into the sky kind of thing. It's officially called a stratovolcano. It's tall because it's built of all these different layers of lava oozing out on top of each other over time, and those are called strata. If you sliced one of these volcanoes open, it would look like a layer cake. Or would that be a strata cake? Anyway, no one is in danger. There are several hundred people who live on the island, but they've all been evacuated. This volcano, though, has got a bit of a history. It erupted big time in 1871. Back then, no one lived on the island, but a German scientist was visiting the area, and he recorded this massive eruption. So far, this one is nowhere near the size of that eruption, but authorities are keeping people at a safe distance just in case. Today, April 19th, is the day many historians say was the beginning of the American Revolution. Early that morning, back in 1775, 700 British troops marched into the Massachusetts town of Lexington. Some brave riders set off on horseback to warn the colonists. One of them you may have heard of, Paul Revere. He galloped through the night, shouting, The British are coming! The British are coming! Meanwhile, in Lexington, a group of citizen soldiers called Minutemen gathered on the green. They were called Minutemen because they said they'd be ready to fight at a minute's notice. So the British troops show up in Lexington and order the Minutemen to leave. And then a short battle broke out. Now, the British kept going on to the town of Concord, but by this time, thanks to the Midnight Riders, like Paul Revere, the colonists were ready. Well, by the end of the day, the British are forced to retreat back to Boston, and the battles of Lexington and Concord, although they were small, were a turning point for everyone involved. They showed that the colonists could fight back, so the whole thing basically sparked the American Revolution. All right, it's riddle time. Wednesday's riddle was, Until I am measured, I am not known. But you will miss me when I have flown. What am I? It's time. All right, time for the Friday riddle. What can you keep after you give it to someone? Yes, you heard that correctly. What can you keep after you give it to someone? Answer on Monday. Are you a fan of snakes? How about a snake 
longer than a school bus. What? Yes, paleontologists, those are the scientists who study dinosaurs, in India uncovered the vertebra, the backbones, of a prehistoric snake that may have been 50 feet long. That's as long as a semi-truck trailer or 10 park benches put next to each other. The fossilized bones, 27 of them, were found in a coal mine back in 2005. At first, scientists thought they'd found the backbone of a big lizard. But after studying the bones, now they say, and it took this long to figure this out, they see the fossils had places for many, many ribs to attach, like the body of a snake, which is like a long tube with lots of ribs. And they also noticed that these bones looked kind of like the bones of modern day pythons. So they think this super-sized, slithering specimen probably lived on land or in a swamp. And what does a 50-foot-long snake eat? Well, the team that discovered it told CNN that other fossils found in the area include fish, turtles, lizards, and even some ancestors of whales. So the 50-foot snake probably ate pretty much whatever it wanted. The weather today, if you're in the northern plains or the north woods west of the Great Lakes, you could see some snow. Meanwhile, more rain, Ah! yes, rain is moving east across the Appalachian Mountains and, and could reach the coast between Georgia and Maine by tonight. Clear skies most everywhere else with mostly pleasant temperatures, except you kids in the northern Rockies. All right, let's end the week with a poem or part of a poem. This is a little bit of a much longer poem called Paul Revere's Ride by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. A hurry of hooves in a village street, a shape in the moonlight, a bulk in the dark, and beneath from the pebbles in passing a spark, struck out by a steed that flies fearless and fleet. That was all, and yet... Through the gloom and the light, the fate of a nation was riding that night, and the spark struck out by that steed in his flight kindled the land into flame with its heat. He has left the village and mounted the steep, and beneath him, tranquil and broad and deep, is the mystic meeting the ocean tides, and under the alders that skirt its edge, now soft on the sand, now loud on the ledge, has heard the tramp of his steed as he rides. Well, that's the show for the week. Thank you very much for listening. If you liked this episode, please like it on your podcast app. And of course, share it and spread the word about the Kids Morning News Network. Grownups, if you'd like to become a supporter, there is a link in the episode description. No pressure, but even three bucks a month would help with production costs. That... I'd like to point out, is less than a dollar a week. I'll be back Monday. I hope you are too. From the KMNN Newsroom, this is Alex, signing off.